Thank you so much for having me. I'm Sweta Kamampati. I'm an assistant professor at City of Hope in the Lymphoma Division. And I'll be reviewing my ASCO 2023 presentation, Real World Outcomes of Brexacaptogene, Autolucil for Relapsed Refractory, Mantle Cell Lymphoma, CIBMTR subgroup analysis by prior treatment. So as we all know, Brexicel is an autologous CD19-directed CAR T-cell therapy. It's approved in the United States for the treatment of adult patients with relapsed refractory mantle cell lymphoma. This approval was based on the pivotal ZUMA2 study, which demonstrated at a three-year follow-up an overall response rate of 91% and a CR rate of 68%. Among patients who achieved a CR, the median duration of response and PFS were 46.7 and 48 months, respectively, and median overall survival was not reached. With respect to safety, grade three uh, or higher CRS and neuro neurologic toxicity has occurred in 15% and 31% of patients respectively. However, as we all know, clinical trials can be very selective in their eligibility criteria, and in real-world setting, patients treated with Brexicel may have disease characteristics and treatment histories that are broader than that of the Zuma 2 eligibility criteria. Of note, BTK naive patients were not eligible for a Zuma 2 study, but the FDA approval for Zuma 2 does not specify prior treatment, so this can lead to heterogeneity in real-world clinical practices. And the other important question to understand with respect to prior treatment is the role and impact of prior bendamustine on CAR T cell outcomes, as there has been some data suggesting that recent bend exposure prior to phoresis can impact the CAR T cell quality and outcomes post CAR T cell therapy. So we need a better understanding of the association and impact between prior therapies and outcomes post cell. And there's been limited real-world safety and efficacy data. And here we report findings from the largest real-world study evaluating outcomes of cell in patients with relapsed refractory mantle cell lymphoma with primary objective being evaluating safety and efficacy and secondary objective um, evaluating outcomes by prior therapy type, including BTK inhibitor, bendamustine, autologous stem cell transplant, and number of prior lines of therapy. So this was our study design. This was a prospective non-interventional cohort study of FDA-approved Brexicel using patient data extracted from the CIBMTR registry. Our analysis population consisted of patients who received standard of care Brexicel between July 2020 and between Dece July 2020 and December 2022. Patients who had clinically significant comorbidities and end organ impairment were not excluded, and patients who received uh, Brexicel as part of a clinical trial or non-commercial setting were not included in the study. So we had seven patients who we excluded ba based on prior history of non-transplant cellular therapy, and 113 patients excluded based on missing data, leading to a total of 380 patients included in the analysis with the data cutoff of February 2023. The median fault was 12 months, and the efficacy of safety endpoints are shown on the slide to the right and included standard efficacy endpoints of response rates, uh, PFS and overall survival, and safety endpoints of CRS, ICANN, cytopenias, and infections. So this is the baseline patient characteristics. There were overall uh, 380 patient cohort as uh, characteristics are highlighted in red to the right of the table. This was a heavily pretreated population with high risk disease characteristics, median age of 66.8, 6% who had ECOG performance status true or higher, 44% of patients with high KS67 index, 20% with TP53, 5% with extranodal CNS involvement, median four prior lines of treatment ranging from one to 12, and 46% and the patients received bridging therapy. So as we can see, this included patients who would not have been included in the Zuma 2 study based on eligibility criteria. And the baseline characteristics in the various subtypes of pa uh, subgroups of patients organized by prior treatment is also shown here. Um, the baseline characteristics in the various subgroups are overall pretty comparable. Majority of patients receive BTK inhibitor, um, and over half the patients received prior Benda. Majority of patients did not receive prior transplant, and majority of patients would receive three or more prior lines of therapy. Older patients were more likely to have had prior Benda and less likely to have received prior transplant. And in looking at the BTK inhibitor, Inhibitor group, patients who received prior BTK inhibitor had, were more likely to have a high KI67 index, ha, ha, more prior lines of treatment, and more likely to receive bridging th therapy. Patients who received prior Benda had, were more likely to have a high KI, um, sorry, patients who received prior Benda were less likely to have a high KI67 index, and patients who received more prior lines of therapy were also more likely to receive bridging treatment. 
The response rates are shown on the slide here with overall response rate of 90% and CR rate of 78%. Um, this is comparable to the Zuma 2 study where the overall response rate was 91% and CR rate was 68%. The response rates in the various subgroups are overall very comparable. Um, when uh, it's important to note that when looking at patients who receive one to two prior lines of therapy compared to three or more, the response rates were higher in the one to two prior line subgroup with a CR rate of uh, that was higher by 12%. Um, the median duration of response was 21.7 months with a 12 month duration of response of 64%. The survival outcomes are also shown here with the median overall survival of 16.8 months with a 12-month overall survival of 74% and a median PFS of 16.5 months and a 12-month PFS of 61%. These survival outcomes are again comparable to the Zuma 2 study where the 12-month PFS and overall survival rates were 61% and 83% respectively. And the median time to relapse was 24 months. So we also evaluated the efficacy outcomes uh, based on prior treatment using multivariate adjustment with the multivariable logistic regression model that was adjusted for age and sex and other covariates that were uh, subject to a stepwise selection process, including ECOG performance status, elevated LDH, extranodal involvement, hemosensitivity, TP53 deletion, KI67, among other baseline characteristics. As we can see here, prior BTK inhibitor exposure, prior bendamustine, and prior transplant did not impact the response rates in a statistically significant manner. But patients who received one to two prior lines of therapy did have a twofold higher uh, likelihood of achieving, um, twofold higher odds of achieving a CR. And patients who had received prior transplant did have reduced risk of PFS and relapse progressive disease with a hazard ratio of 0.56 and 0.57, respectively. The safety outcomes are shown here. The overall CRS um, was 88% with high grade seen in 10% of patients. Overall ICANS was observed in 60% with high grade in 28% of patients. This is overall comparable to the Zuma 2 study where any grade, high grade CRS was observed in 15% and high grade neurotoxicity was observed in 31% of patients. The, in, with respect to management of CRS and ICANN, 76% of patients received TOSI, 61% of patients received steroids, steroids, and median time to onset was five days for CRS and seven days for ICANNs, and median time from onset to resolution was six days for CRS and eight days for ICANNs. And CRS and ICANNs resolved by week three from onset in 95% and 78% of patients, respectively. Overall, this is all very comparable to the Zuma 2 study. And we also looked at other safety outcomes of interest. 6% of patients had prolonged neutropenia and 21% of patients had prolonged thrombocytopenia that was grade three or higher past day 30. 6% of patients had subsequent neoplasms and 41% of patients had clinically significant infections. When breaking down the infections further by subtype, 18% had bacterial, 26% viral, and 4% fungal. Overall, these safety outcomes of interest were also comparable to the Zuma 2 study, where 32% of patients had clinically significant infections, and um, total of 26% uh, of patients had cytopenias grade three or higher past day 90. The non-relapse mortality is shown here, and the non-relapse mortality rates at day 100 and year one were 4% and 8%, respectively, most commonly due to infections. And the primary causes of death are shown to the right. Um, in the overall population, 23% of patients had died in that 12-month follow-up with the median 12-month follow-up. Most common cause of death was underlying disease observed in 14% of patients, um, followed by infection observed in 3% of patients as a cause of death. Safety outcomes were also evaluated with multivariate adjustments, similarly to previously described for efficacy outcomes. As we can see here, exposure to prior BTK inhibitor and prior transplant did not affect the safety outcomes of interest, including high-grade CRS or ICANS, prolonged cytopenias, or non-relapse mortality. Exposure to prior bendamustine did um, reduce the risk of high-grade ICANS with an odds ratio of 0.5 and increased the risk of prolonged thrombocytopenia with an odds ratio of 1.98. Patients who received one to two prior lines of therapy did have an increased risk of grade three or higher CRS with an odds ratio of 2.26. 
So in conclusion, this is the largest real-world analysis to date evaluating the efficacy and safety of Brexicil in patients with relapsed refractory mantle cell lymphoma, and we found here, and we report here that the outcomes are very similar to the Zuma 2 study with a median follow-up of 12 months. The overall response rate was 90%, CR rate of 78%, with a median duration of response of 21.7 months. With respect to safety, the overall incidence of CRS and ICANS was 88% and 60%, with high-grade incidence of 10% and 28% respectively, again, comparable to Zuma 2 study. Complete response rates were higher in patients who received Brexicel in earlier lines of therapy, one to two compared to three or more. Outcomes of Brexicel in patients were also largely consistent regardless of prior exposure to BTK inhibitor, bendamustine, or autologous stem cell transplant. There were some signals in the multivariate analysis when evaluating efficacy by subgroups, including higher CR rates in patients with earlier prior lines of treatment, as well as improvement in PFS in patients who received prior autologous stem cell transplant. There are some limitations to the study, which include short follow-up of 12 months, small sample size in some of the subgroups, such as the BTK-naive cohort, as well as missing data with respect to some of the granular details, such as time from prior Benda exposure to CAR T-cell treatment. We need further follow-up to assess the long-term clinical benefits and durability of responses of Brexicel in this real-world patient population. Thank you so much.